an opportunity, one of the first opportunities to bring together all of the different sectors that work on issues of integration. And so by that, what we mean is um, primary care, mental health, substance use. We also looked at it in terms of um, county systems change, where we had some examples of counties that um, are actually already doing integration, but they're really at the systems level. And then we also brought the health plans to the table. So that was, that was very much the focus of the conference on the first day, which was to look at um, what is already working in California. What are these innovative practices? What can we learn from these innovative practices? And to get a sense of um, you know, where that, where that um, activity is going on. The other idea that we had and that we were trying to promote was to advance the understanding and application of the triple aim. How many of you know about the triple aim? Excellent. I don't have to tell you what it is. Um, but basically, you know, the idea there is, uh, for, at least for the summit, was to get people thinking more concretely about what the triple aim means, and specifically in the context of in integrated or coordinated care. I don't know what happens if I have to go backwards. Okay. <laughs> So, um, you know, why do we want to integrate care? The research shows that it reduces stigma, and that's really what one of the major goals that we're trying to get to, which is de decreasing stigma and discrimination and making sure that we're increasing access to, to mental health services and substance use services. And so um, the other piece of this is that we know that the stigma and discrimination for seeking behavioral health services is more pronoun pronounced in um, culturally diverse and low-income communities. We also know that the research shows that, that those communities are, are least likely to access mental health care um, from traditional providers. They typically seek those services from other sources, in, including primary care. And there are many reasons um, that, that impede access for those populations. And it includes the lack of knowledge, fear of disclosure, rejection by friends and family, you know, basic stigma and discrimination. And integrated coordinated care, both in the literature and also from um, real experience in the counties currently, is, is being shown to um, ease these issues and to increase and improve access and engagement to services. And one of the reasons that we want to focus on care coordination and integrated care is that co-occurring conditions are so common. And co-occurring conditions, you know, mental health, substance use issues, but also physical health issues. And this slide is really just kind of showing you the, you know, the not quite Venn diagram here of how we have these overlapping issues. And what typically happens is that care is fragmented, and you all know this, and so, you know, what we're trying to solve is how do we, how do we better coordinate the care that happens on the physical health side and the behavioral health side. And one of the, um, one of the terrible things that happens is that with, when you don't have coordination of care, often treatment on one side can complicate or worsen conditions on the other side. And so um, one of the things that we do a lot of work on through the learning collaboratives, through the work that we do on the Integrated Behavioral Health Project, is to look at things like medication reconciliation and ways to facilitate that. Because that's one of the, the, you know, the first places where these you know, discrete conditions can start um, colliding with each other. The other um, piece about integration is that, you know, we definitely, as I said before, we see it as a key strategy for um, improving access and reducing stigma and discrimination. And integration is, um, you know, it's definitely an effective strategy, as I've said, and I've given you some citations. I don't think that you're getting these slides, but if you are interested in, this, in the literature, you can go to the website ibhp.org, which is the Cal Mesa IBHP website, and we have lots and lots of um, research studies that, that are um, supporting integration and showing, you know, kind of the business case and the cost piece of that. And then, you know, you can also see this in terms of recommendations that came out of the IOM report from 2005, where um, it basically concluded that the only way to to achieve true quality and equality in healthcare was to integrate care. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jen, who's going to give you um, kind of the highlight of some of the learnings from the summit 
and then put you to work. So um, for those of you who have worked ever with Dale Jarvis, you know that he is the most amazing synthesizer ever to exist. Um, and we asked him to sit through our sessions at the first day of the summit. Um, and it really was an incredible sort of relay of sessions, primary care, substance use, mental health, health plans, um, and then these system leaders all talking about, you know, really how are we going to be achieving the triple aim from their perspective. And what Dale said were some interesting things the next morning, and um, I'm bringing back his synthesis because I think it was really some of the um, most kind of spot on um, kind of thoughts, not only about the summit itself, but really about where California is. Um, so the first thing that he talked about was that he was very excited that the entire healthcare system, not just mental health, not just substance use, but primary care, the health plans, it's sort of like a light bulb is going on that if there's not a focus on the target populations that we work with, very complex clients who have mental health issues, substance use disorders, and physical health conditions, we're not going to be able to achieve the triple aim. So we're really being able to get organized together by sort of a shared focus and shared aim. The second thing that he talked about was the um, real work that needs to go into the design of this different care model. And um, I see Steve Kaplan in the audience. He was one of our wonderful presenters. And um, you know, I think that what you really have to be able to think about is that this is a very long, long haul. Um, I talked with Richard Van Horn for a moment before um, the workshop began, told him to not look so grumpy. He told me he's not grumpy. He's very, very excited. And it is a very, very exciting time. But it is a long haul of work. And so. Um, Really being able to think about how you pace yourself through the change, I think, was what Dale was trying to communicate at that time. On the third area that he um, talked about, he, I love this word, that uh, building our new healthcare system, it's a multi-year chaotic process. And that really, really rang true also in many of the presentations. And the chaotic, it's a combination of both really chaotic process, but also there has to be some sort of logical framework surrounding that process or you get too exhausted by the change. And you'll see it at every single level within your organization and it's just you, you move into this paralysis from change. And so um, what he was excited about was that many of the um, panelists spoke about having some structured support for their change. Many of the panelists have been part of the CIMH learning collaboratives that focus on care coordination and integration. Um, other panelists have been part of the um, TIDES initiative with the Integrated Behavioral Health Project led, which was really helping to put some structure around the design of health homes, which also require care coordination. And then the last thing, which was really great, and I guess you know Richard again kind of affirms this, is he saw us moving at a really fast pace. So Dale had done quite a bit of work in California about, you know, I mean, he's always been doing work in California, but he hadn't really been in touch with us for a couple of years. And he was so very impressed with sort of the speed at which he saw all of us really changing. And so the, um, when we think a bit about trying to go to the next steps, you know, what, what do we do after the summit? Because we very much kind of, um, presented the summit as a first day where you had this kind of experience of just, you know, drinking from a fire hose, a lot, a lot of information, but it was important to kind of get folks to sort of the same foundational level of information. But the second day was focused on action planning, and I want to talk a little bit about that in the context of the state presentation that we saw this morning. So. Um, we had these wonderful keynote speakers that I'd already spoken about in panels, um, primary care, substance use, health plans, um, systems leaders, um, and mental health had all sort of talked a bit about how it was that they were achieving the triple aim. Um, and then there were the reflections on California's progress. There was sort of an overarching framework um, taken from health, actually, about um, what are sort of the core elements that you need as you're beginning to design a system that is actually capable of achieving the triple aim. And then the last part of the summit, we call it up here draft action plans. Um, 
I was, you know, I have uh, worked with Karen Baylor in the past, and I was so impressed this morning with her honesty about the fact that the state is very much at their kind of starting place with their own integration around mental health and substance use. And there wasn't even really any discussion necessarily about the work going on with integrating primary care. And so I think we had this perception, you know, we always have the kind of biggest plans and wonderful blueprints that we would come out of the summit with these great action plans. We were going to feed them to the state and the state was going to start moving forward and local level was going to move forward. And similar to what Dale said, that what we really learned from the summit is that this is all a very chaotic process. And so the state is really beginning to build its own infrastructure to be able to be informed by what the local level is already learning. And that's going to take some time. So we don't really think that the 2013 draft action plans are really plans that are right now going to be appropriate to sort of send up to the state. What we do think is that there are many efforts that are going on that are um, going to be fed by some of the, um, what we're th thinking about now as opportunities for change that came out of the summit. And that's what we're going to have you working on for the rest of the afternoon. Um, what we really think is that there are some key areas around achieving the triple aim that got focused on on day two. And if I want to kind of just walk you through the report that's in front of you, so it's a paper report. And if you go to what is the second, is the second section, the second section, on the cover, it kind of outlines all of these topics that we were hoping to have action plans on. So we were going to talk about health and, and uh, prevention, uh, health literacy, improving access, creating equality-driven um, uh, organizations. And so I do think that those efforts are still going to, um, they're seeds for projects that are going on. Uh, we had an overwhelming number of applications to the CIMH Learning Collaboratives for Care Coordination. And so those information that came out of that, uh, the summit is going to be feeding that collaborative. The Integrated Behavioral Health Project is working on summits at a um, local level. And the uh, um, seeds are going to be able to help feed those summits. Um, there is work that's going on with a um, kind of integrated policy and practice initiative. So it's health care, health plans, primary care, substance use, kind of working together to really think about how are we shaping policy that will then shape what's happening on the ground. So lots of seeds, but we're no longer calling them action plans. So this is where we want to go next, and this is what we're going to be asking your help on. Um, we want to be able to disseminate this summit report. And again, want to kind of um, think a bit about what Karen had reflected on this morning. I didn't even know you were right in front of me, Karen. <laughs> Karen was saying all these nice things. <laughs> Good thing I didn't say anything bad. <laughs> um, but again, this kind of quick process of change. So you see a lengthy transcription in front of you. Um, and I don't know about all of you, but I get at least 50 emails a day with reports related to the ACA and webinars that I should attend and uh, different podcasts that I should have downloaded like two weeks ago. And it is too much information for all of us to take in. And so while we at CI Major are wonderful writing these sort of lengthy reports, what we're recognizing is that we really need to make some changes in terms of our own way of disseminating knowledge. So this report is actually going to be translated into a short um, three to five minute video, trying to really kind of capture the nuggets. And so that's been very exciting for us to begin to recognize the ways that we have to change to kind of keep up with the environment that all of you are living in. So that's the first next step. Um, we are going to be um, taking these opportunities for change, previously action plans, but these uh, ideas around some kind of key components of a, a changes in the system back to the IPI steering committee that I talked about earlier. Um, the hope would be that when you have these statewide associations working together, that they would be able to actually work in concert and be able to move forward some of these recommendations. Um, and then right now today, we're going to have you be um, helping us to inform these uh, opportunities for change. Last one. Oh, no, you're right. And um, 
And then it will be really um, the Integrated Behavioral Health Project funded by CalMesa that's really going to be taking a lead around trying to kind of work with all the various partners and be able to be to um, think through what makes sense in terms of next steps. The other key um, uh, kind of event that will be happening is that we are going to be doing a briefing for the Department of Healthcare Services and our hope would be that in that briefing it would be able to be the beginning of thinking through how can some of these local um, efforts really begin to shape some of the policy that's going to be um, coming out at the state level. Okay. So any questions at all so far? So you've all been caught up. Good thing you didn't waste two days of your life at the summit. Um, but come next year. But come next year. We're going to try to get uh, Atul Gawande 